Right, let's get to it. Let's chat 2024 goals. As you can tell from the title, they're going to be ADHD friendly. Our brains work a little bit different to everyone else's, so we're going to have to make them friendly for our difficult ass brains. I have done mine for this year, so I thought I'd run through my goals, because I'm sure subscribers want to know my goals anyway, and I'd also run through how I go about setting my goals to try and help with the thing that is my brain. I have done it a little bit differently this year. I feel like every year I'm improving on goal setting that is effective for me instead of getting caught up in this thing that everybody does where they're like, oh, really draw on things from your life, really push yourself. We can't push yourself too much, can we? But every year I am getting better and this year I feel like I've done really well. It feels effective, but big goals. Like, I don't know, I feel like I've done well, so let me chat through it. First thing to do is, well, first thing that I did was reflect on this last year. Now, let's not get caught up in crapping on ourselves and telling ourselves everything we've done badly this year. I was very fortunate enough to get therapy for like six weeks at one point. And one of the biggest things that helped me in that therapy was she said, because I was telling her about my journaling that I used to do and the questions that I used to ask myself. And a lot of my questions were, what have you done badly? What could you improve? All that kind of stuff. And she was like, take them out. And I was like, well, no, because I want to improve myself. And she was like, have you improved yourself? And I was like, And then she was like, those questions are obviously not serving you. They're not doing what you want them to do. So don't focus on it. And I was like, that's true. Those questions do not make me perform better in life. I don't look at the last week and go, wow, I was really crap and procrastinated a ton. Let's not do that. And then not procrastinate. So why am I forcing myself to think through all of the bad stuff that I've done when it's not doing anything good for me? So let's just get rid of that, okay? We're not doing that question. I think it's super important to not focus on that, especially with our brains, because we will literally just zone into that and be like, I am a horrible person. And then you're not gonna want a goal set, are you? You're gonna feel rubbish. So when I say reflect on the year, the things that I focused on was, let me get this up. I do feel like writing stuff down is very effective because it just gets rid of that scramble in your brain where you've got loads of different thoughts going on at once and writing it down makes you just think of that one thing at the time so i did this with my partner so it does say we but obviously swap it for you but whatever things we did well this year then jack did things that we didn't do well this year because he is neurotypical so he can deal with that question i couldn't so i just didn't do it and then also jealousy items so I got this off of TikTok, if I can find, I think I can find it, so I'll leave the link down below. It was things that when I saw this throughout the year, I felt really jealous and envious and being like, why can't I have that? I wrote them down because that is gonna really help for you to know what your motivations are. If you're anything like me, when it comes to goal setting, you sit there and you're like, what do I want from my life? And then it leads you down an existential crisis. And then you're just like, what's the point of everything? Let's, we're not gonna do that. We're gonna try and think of the things that made us jealous this past year, as well as thinking of the things that we did well this year. So let me go through mine as an example. So to, we had together and apart. I think I'm gonna focus just on my solo stuff because obviously Jack isn't on the channel and we'll just leave him out of it. He is on the channel, but you know what I mean? He's not in this video and I don't like talking on behalf of him. Right, so I took time off when I needed it and I acknowledged burnout. This can be quite difficult, so if you have partner or partners, do it with them because it can be really hard to acknowledge things you've done well and remember this past year. I find it really hard to be like, right, was that in 2023? So if you've got someone, like a friend, who knows you quite well, do it with them, it makes it a lot easier. Like Jack was the one who said you acknowledged you were in burnout and I was like, oh yeah, I did, that is quite good. Another thing that I felt like I did well was kept pursuing friends even when not going well. And I don't mean like I stalked people, I meant that like I kept trying to make new friends even when I kept getting like, not rejected, because that feels like too harsh of a word, but when when friendships didn't go the way that I thought they were gonna. And also when I did get rejected, because I feel like this year I can say that I got rejected once and I like found out the reason why. I didn't try, I didn't take let that really, really get to me. I have incredibly bad rejection sensitivity. And I really, I really feel like I successfully didn't cry over that which I'm buzzing about. <laughs> and the last thing that I had was I really improved my YouTube. You guys can tell me if I'm correct on this, but I feel like 
I have actually upped my game this last year. I feel like I was coasting with YouTube for too long, not really putting in effort. I feel like I put a lot of effort into the videos now, try and make them a bit more interesting. I've learned a little bit, not a huge amount. I'm not saying my videos are great or perfect, whatever, but I feel like I've started learning about videography. I've started learning about engagement, things like that. I just feel like the videos themselves, I've improved them. Uh, subscribers, if you could let me know whether I'm correct on that, that would be great. Because if I think I've improved them and then you guys are like, nah, I really need to improve it more. Jealousy items. So these are some examples of what I felt like I was jealous of when I saw them on TikTok and stuff. And now that I know that I like doing this, I'm going to do that going forward as well. Like when I'm just doom scrolling, if I see something that makes me feel jealous, I'm going to think about it and write it down maybe. And stuff that makes me feel not motiv- yeah, probably motivated, just things that I like looking at. I'm gonna save them in folders on Instagram and on TikTok. Just things that I want my life to look like. I haven't done this this last year, but when I came to the goal setting, I feel like that would have been very beneficial. So I am gonna do that moving forward. Anyway, jealousy items. This is proving the ADHD, I go off on tangents. Uh, houses and being able to decorate. I love our house, I love it, but we do rent. We can't completely change it the way that we want to. And when I've seen people with bigger houses and layouts and being able to reno, I felt very jealous. Ability to buy clothes just whenever I want. I can't do that at the minute. My wardrobe is incredibly small currently because I've grown out of, I've talked about this a lot on the channel, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but I've grown out of a lot of clothes with my weight gain and I just haven't had the funds to re replenish that so my wardrobe is very small so I felt very jealous when people are like I saw this and I bought it and I was just like oh I'd love to do that this one's more of a jack one but having a drive at home we have an electric car so we don't have a home charger because we don't have a drive that is very difficult private outdoor space we do have a garden but we live on a terraced street so and we live like on a row of terraced streets so our garden is like our garden uh road and then more gardens so in the summer it doesn't feel private no one looks well there's one house that looks in but they never look in but it's more just like it's quiet that's what i want when i see people in their garden and doing relaxing i can't do i don't go out there because it's too loud for me so that that made me feel jealous and have an expendable income i think that one's self-explanatory from those questions i then went on to our big goals so we have had big goals from last year i just copied and pasted them and moved them across and then we reviewed them these are big goals like as in life big goals they're not huge things I, I wasn't going to go through them because they feel a bit personal but that's kind of the point of this video and i feel like i want to manifest them i want to put them out in the universe so i'm going to do it please don't judge me for one of them one of them is a very big goal <laughs> Um, but we'll come on to it. But these are like huge big goals. Like when you see the things you're jealous of, like owning a house, but you don't feel like in the next year that's gonna happen. I say that's a big goal. So let me go through my big goals. Like I say, we moved them across and we actually really, really excitedly ticked off two of our big, big goals last year, which is great. And they are still on there. I don't know if you can see, there's like ticks because they are big goals that we've ticked off. That's freaking huge. So I am not erasing them off the list. I'm leaving them there and I'm ticking them off. So the first one was have a Range Rover slash big Volvo. Obviously we haven't done that, but I have ticked it off because we got our dream car or Jack's dream car. And we had the chance to go for the big Volvo and we decided not to go for it. Like we could have done it, but we decided not to. So I feel like that is checked off. We just decided on a different car. It, we still got our like dream car, Jack is over the moon, that isn't like a car currently that we'd be like, I'd have that over our car. So I feel like that is a tick. Next one was have Sony vlogging SV1 camera. That is currently what you're being filmed on. I did that last year, which is just super exciting. I didn't think that was gonna happen for a while. I told myself that I was only allowed to buy it when I made, enough money on YouTube, which I actually, now that I have it, reflecting on it, that was stupid. I should have got it way earlier because that old camera was horrific. Like it was such bad quality. And I don't feel like I would have had as many subscribers as I do with this camera. So I'm very pleased that happened. If you're interested in how I did that, I basically bought it secondhand from CEX. Saved, I think I saved 250 quid. So buzzing with that. Right, these, that, those are the two that we ticked off. So going forward, afford to buy new clothes. I've talked about that one. Pay for my own hair and nails. 
I feel like the only regular thing that I spend money on currently is my hair and my nails. That's the only thing I spend money on, but <laughs> they cost a lot of money. And obviously currently Jack is having to pay for them. So I would like to be able to pay for them myself. Then <laughs> deposit and money for a house. Two very small different things. Like one's like, oh, pay for your nails. And next like a house. <laughs> but we had actually had that down as deposit and money for buying a fixer upper house. But I've just put for a house. We'd like to do that. Stays at luxury hotels. We love traveling. I cover travel on this channel semi-frequently. And we love luxury hotels. We're not really those travel people that will do as many countries as you can, just like in budget. That's not our vibe. Our vibe is we like to stay at luxury hotels. So that's big goals. These are the, <laughs> hang on. I'll do the one that's kind of a bit like, oh yeah, uh, have an amazing wedding. Right, these two are the ones that are very big goals and the last one you're probably gonna judge me for. So the first one is be well known for YouTube and photography. Obviously that is my goal, like that's my career goal, to be well known for YouTube and photography and have a community, things like that. So that's on there. The last one is be on Strictly. <laughs> I have wanted to be on Strictly for my entire life, like ever since we, I started watching Strictly, I've wanted to do it. I love ballroom dancing. I tried to do it at uni because there was a ballroom society, but it was just really expensive. Like I think it was like five pound a session. And just for me that was really expensive. So I just didn't, I did, I think I did one free taster session and then I did one session and then I just never went back. Cause I was like, I can't afford to be paying five pound a week. And I just, but I just love it. I love. I love everything about Strictly. I love the community that's on there. I love how life-changing it is for people. I love the glitz and glam of it. I love the dancing, like, I love it. And I know I'm a bit embarrassed saying it because that is such a huge goal. You have to be such a big, like, social media person to even be considered to go on that show. But I'm speaking out into the universe. I'm manifesting. At some point, I want to be on Strictly. Right, from there, I have then went into, right, to get to those goals, what can I do this year? Like what's more feasible? And also what do I want out of this year? Those ones aren't really connected to the big goals. I just like having the big goals. So I'm like, what do I want out of life? That is a loaded question within itself. That's why I feel like the TikTok and Instagram folders come in really, really handy. When I was doing this, I was taking like breaks to go on Instagram and to go on TikTok to see if I could find anything that I would want to save. But when we come to the 2024 goals, you wanna do stuff for this year. I feel like you can do it in two different ways. Last year, I did it where I only had two goals for 2024 and I actually made goals for July of 2023 instead. I like that. I feel like you could do that, but I'm trying a different method this year. And that is I'm creating better goals in terms of like smart goals. I know, I know, I know school has ruin smart goals but they are effective and i feel like i want stuff i can take off we our, our brains love ticking off stuff we love that dopamine thing so we've got to make it so we can tick off those goals i watched grace beverly's video of goal setting i would recommend watching that video and she said it in a way of like you want this to not be just this big dopamine rush of planning your goals and then never hitting them and that's what i felt like mine have been for the last few years where i'm like yeah goals woohoo and then ignored them. Not so much last year, I definitely did better last year, but I feel like the thing that's gonna make this more effective is goals that are measurable and I can actually tick off. So all of these goals are measurable and then I've broke them down into smaller goals. So for example, I've got 4,300 subscribers is my end of year goal. I'm currently on 3,300. But for that, I know that doesn't seem like a lot. I feel like I could be like, well, I wanna get 5K. We're being reasonable. Every year for the first like four or five years, well, I think I'm five years now. So I think for the first like three, four years of doing YouTube, I was like, 5K subscribers, 5K subscribers. And then it never happened. And I felt so freaking depressed with myself and disappointed in myself. So what I did with this, and I've done this for the last year or so. And last year I actually hit my, oh, I haven't done, oh. I haven't done whether I hit my 2023 goals. Anyway, I did hit my 2023 goal for subscribers. I passed it by about, the year as well which was super exciting and the reason I've done I've been able to hit it I think 
is basically I looked at my monthly averages for the last year before, saw what I would probably get to with that average and then rounded it up. So I think, hang on, I, I wrote it down. So basically the estimated average for last year, for this year, would get me to 4,200 exactly, which was weird. And because I want to be like a bit more achieving, I've upped it to 4,300. That's still a hundred more. That's a lot. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a lot. So that's how I got my subscriber goal. Within this one, it's a bit of a funny one, I could break it down more, but some of my other goals are going to help me to that goal. So I could break it down into, right, what do I need to do to increase my subscriber count? Regularly posting, uh, more short content, stuff like that. But I've actually set them as my other goals. So for this one, I've actually just broken it down into 200 increments. So my first one is to get to 3,500 subscribers. And when that happens, I will be able to tick it off and I'm nearly on my way. Hopefully that makes sense. The way I did it was I wrote all my goals down and then went back and broke them down. But I feel like it's gonna make more sense to you guys if I tell you the big goal and then tell you how I've broken it down. Right, next one is to read 25 books. I failed my reading goal last year. Last year was not a good reading year for me. That video is coming of all the books that I read in 2023. So I'll talk about it more in there, but I didn't meet my goal. So I've kept it at 25, which was the goal for last year. So for this one, like I could just do like read five books, read 10 books, like the goal, the subscriber goal, but I don't feel like that's a very good goal to make sure that I do it. So the first goal that I've done for this one is read four times a week before bed for two weeks. That's where it dropped off for me. Me and Jack got out of the habit of reading before bed and that's why I didn't read as much. So if I can hit that goal, it's gonna help me read 25 books this year. Once I've done that, the next one is read one time a week during the day for a month. And the whole idea of this is we do, I don't move on to the next goal until I've done that one. This is how I do my online coaching as well for personal training. It's a very effective way. So say for example, if I don't read four times a week before bed for two consecutive weeks, I, I reset that goal and I don't move on to the next one until I've done that. And that's what I've got so far. I'm very much willing to then assess what goal I want to come next when I've got to the next one. The majority of these only have two or three short steps because then I'll plan them when I get to the end of those steps. I hope all of this is making sense. I'll hopefully have wrote stuff on the screen. Next up is more vertical content. And this is what I mean by that's going to help me gain more subscribers. I hope. By vertical content, I mean shorts, reels, TikToks. I call it vertical content because I tend to use the same thing on all platforms. So broken down, my first goal for this one is plan four shorts. Just plan them. I don't have to make them. I don't have to edit them. I just have to plan four shorts. Then once I've done that, I want to post one a week for four weeks. Then once I've done that, I want to film two a week for four weeks. Not edit them because that feels too big for me when I think about filming, editing and posting. It's a lot. So I'm breaking it down to what I feel achievable. I feel like that's the, that's the biggest thing here. Do what you feel is achievable for what you find difficult. If you find the filming difficult, that's probably gonna be the last thing on your goals, if that makes sense. So if you found the filming difficult, your next goal would probably be like edit two. Because filming just, I know you've got to film to do them, but it just, it takes the pressure away from doing the thing that you don't wanna do. Hopefully that made sense. Next up was last time on TikTok. It's very self-explanatory. I spend too much time on TikTok. I think this stems from other stuff for me. I am currently using TikTok as a hobby because I currently don't have any special interests or hobbies, which is really freaking difficult. But I am, I'm not putting any effort into finding a hobby and I want to spend less time on TikTok. So I'm hoping as I force myself to spend less time on TikTok, I'll pick something else up like reading. The first goal for that one is limit, right? No one judge me for how long I'm on TikTok, okay? I do go on TikTok whilst I'm doing other things. I'm not just solely sitting there for this amount of hours watching it. I am on it when I'm doing my makeup, cooking, doing some kind of work, like no judgment, okay? So limit to four hours a day for two weeks. I've already started that. I've set up the screen time limit. I've had it pop up once so far and I have obeyed it. I really do think that once it pops up, I'm not going to be like, let's just do it anyway. No, it's not happening. So I'm going to do that for two weeks and then I'm going to limit to six pickups a day. That's going to be harder to track, but I'll figure it out. But it's more like sessions, if that makes sense, because I will just intermittently put it through my day. That's why I'm on it so much. And we were looking at how many pickups I do a day. And I think it's something like 
11 currently. So I'm gonna limit it to six sessions a day and then I, I'll come on to more goals. Next is put more effort in my appearance. I feel like this one, it, it is a bit unfair on myself, but it is something I wanna prioritize because this last year I just, when I look back, I'm like, oh God, like I just didn't put any effort in, which is fine if that's not what you wanna do. But for me, I feel like when I, one of the things that I do get jealous of and when I look at people and I'm like, I love them, it's because they have put more effort into their appearance and that's just something that I, find important but that is not me saying that everyone should do that it is a hundred percent just a personal preference and whether you want to i'm not saying everyone should put effort in their appearance it's just something that i find important for me and this last year i have been in burnout so i'm not kicking myself over the fact that i didn't put a huge amount of effort in but just this next year i want to make sure that i am putting a bit more effort and like one year i think it was 20 21 i look back on the pictures and i'm like that was a cute look that was a cute look that was a cute look that's what i want from this year whereas this last year i don't have many cute looks <laughs> even if it's literally just because obviously we have the clothes goal even if it's just from shoulders up like i've done something cute with my hair i've put cute earrings in i've like coordinated my makeup like that kind of thing that's what i want from this year so starting from the bottom because like i'm starting from nowhere because there's burnout this year so please again do not judge me if you are not autistic and you don't understand hygiene issues in autism just don't listen to this bit because i i do not want any judgment from anyone hygiene is hard in autism okay so no judgment please so the first goal is wash my face at tea time five times a week for two weeks i find anything to do with water very very difficult i do not like it i don't like being wet i don't like any of that so things like washing my face showering things like that i found very difficult and I want to get my, I feel like I'm quite good with my skincare apart from washing my face properly. I use, I want to do it before bed, but then when I go to bed, I'm like, I don't want wet face because then I'm gonna struggle sleeping. So I get in my head about it. So I thought, when's the best time that I'm gonna do it that's gonna make me feel like I'm still doing it before bed, but I'm actually gonna do it. And for me, that was tea time. So I feel like that's when I'm actually gonna be able to do this goal consistently. So I've got it down as five times a week for two weeks because sometimes I just don't wear makeup. So I don't feel it more important to like pr properly wash my face. So I put five times a week because even on those mo no makeup days, I know we should be washing my face, but I'm being gentle to myself first. Then the next one is do it everything shower once a week for four weeks. So like washing my hair, scrubbing my body, that kind of thing. Again, we're doing no judgment, please. But everything shower once a week and like scrub my hair because my hair gets so greasy so quickly. I'm relying on dry shampoo too much. Right, the next three are less tangible. And I know that's what we were saying, we're making the goals tangible, but some of them, it's hard to. So one of them, I think there's only two actually. One of them is keep romanticizing. This last year, I have been taking little video clips of like romanticizing life, the little mundane bits, and I've loved it. I love having those on my phone, so I'm just gonna keep doing that. Oh, there is three. Do a chin up. I know what I need to do to do a chin up. I, like I know what I need to do with that and it's just time with chin ups. I'm already doing the small steps. It's just, I need to give it time and actually do the steps. So it's just do a chin up. And the next one is have more clothes I feel confident in, but this one's hard until I start bringing in an income. There's nothing I can really do about it. So the only step that I had was organized clothes to sell. Cause I do have a big pile of like gym clothes that I need to sell. I just find it really difficult to actually do it. So I've got the first step is just organize the clothes. And that's the goals for this year, but I'm going to show you one other thing that I feel is really important and really helpful as an ADHD, -er, and that is, oh god, I don't think I'm going to be able to hold it. I've talked about it on the channel before, but if you are new, you'll have not seen it. A whiteboard. Hello. This is massive. It's absolutely huge. This is in our kitchen. You might have seen it in vlogs, but big ass whiteboard. You don't have to get this big of a whiteboard, but I highly, highly recommend a whiteboard, and I've had... ADHDers and autistic people come into my house, see the whiteboard and go, that is a brilliant idea. And then they've done it. So would highly recommend. And I'm gonna put it down and put a picture on screen instead because it's huge. So at the top, we do have a schedule. We have like Monday, Thursday. Why did I do that? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. That used to be bigger on this whiteboard, but we weren't using it as much. I find it really useful for weeks where there's a lot in like christmas found it really really useful but weeks where there's not much plans we didn't use it weeks where there was a lot of plans really really helped with me getting my brain straight for what was happening what day so because we didn't use it that much i've just made it smaller i still wanted it on there but i've made it smaller then I, we've got the breakable down steps 
I wanted them somewhere that we could see them. I wanted them somewhere I could physically tick them off that wasn't just the iPad. We're in the kitchen every day, so we see them every day. I thought it was really useful for me and Jack to remember what the goals were. I've just wrote the two, and then I will like, once I've ticked them, I'll go back and like erase them and stuff like that. I just didn't think putting all of them was very space savvy. So I've just put the two and then once we've done them, we'll move them on. Then at the bottom, I have weekly goals and monthly goals. I have found this so much more useful than habits. We can't do habits, all right? If you're ADHD and you feel like you just can't do habits, no matter how hard you try, we can't do them. That's not how our brain works. And I feel like everybody in these goal settings are like, sort your habits, sort your habits, sort your habits. It ain't gonna happen, my love. I'm so sorry. It's just, it, it's probably not gonna happen for you. I found the weekly and monthly goals thing so much easier because again, you get the dopamine tick, your dopamine hit with ticking them off. You can see them if they're on a whiteboard and you can do them whenever you feel like doing them. And you can even do them if it gets to Sunday and you haven't done any of them. You can just be like, crap, I've not done them this week. And then you can tick them off. It's so much more effective. So for example, weekly, I have Hoover, check the plants, sort the clothes, do washing, clean the car, things like that. And then with monthly, I've got intentional date with Jack, uh, dust, change the bed sheets, stuff like that. Like that is so much easier than adding in habits to your day. If you want stuff that's every day, put it like times two or whatever, times seven, times five, whatever, and then tick them off. It's really, really sad, but we can't do habits. So instead I do monthly and weekly goals. Anyway, that was a long video. I do apologize. Hopefully you have watched it till the end. The other thing that I do do is a vision board and I have that set as my computer desktop wallpaper. I really enjoy doing them. This year, something additional I did on the vision board was put my goals on there just so when I'm on my computer, I remember them as well because I really wanna be able to hit all of the goals. So I kind of have like a third of it, the goals, and then the other two thirds, pictures of what I want my life to look like. I do have some in there as well of like a photo, so I've took a screenshot of my YouTube and I photoshopped 5k in there for subscribers. I know that's not my goal but I feel like a vision board's more like manifesting so I do have like 5k and then I've got a picture of my bank account with more money in and I do feel like photoshopping them on there so it's more like manifestation. I really enjoyed doing it because it's nice to see 5k next to my name. <laughs> But that's just, I don't know, I just find that really fun. So I love doing that as well. But if you feel like you're gonna look at that and feel dread, don't do it. Anyway, that's gonna be it because this video is ridiculously long. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you found it useful, please make sure to leave a video a like, comment, subscribe, share. All of those things is gonna help me meet my goal. So if you could, I'd greatly appreciate it. Anyway, even if you don't do any of that, hopefully we'll see you at some point in 2024 this year. To any of my subscribers, I would love to hear any of your 2024 goals. I am nosy. I am nebby. If there is one thing I am, it is nosy. So please let me know what your goals are. I'd love to hear them. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully we'll see you in another video. Bye.